Let me show you how to use Campaign Automator from Optimizer to automatically build a Google Ads account from your structured data. Let's get started by creating a new template from scratch. The first thing you'll need to do is add your data to it. For this example, I'm going to say we're using a Google spreadsheet and I've already grabbed the URL from an existing Google spreadsheet so I can go and fetch it. In this spreadsheet, if you look at it, you'll see that there's a bunch of columns like brand, exterior color, interior color, and other things you might see when you're selling cars, for example. So those columns have already been fetched from right here. If you have multiple sheets on the Google spreadsheet, you can select them from right here. With this, we can continue and click Save. If you need to add some additional columns, you can do that through derived columns. You'll usually want to ask the optimizer team for some help with this, but some examples of what we can do is we can fix capitalization issues in certain of your fields, or we can even pull different strings from fields that you have. So we can manipulate the fields to make them cleaner so that they're easier to use for insertion into keywords, ad text, etc. You can also set up inventory conditions. So in this example, as you noticed, when I look at it, you see that we sell cars and we sell cars with different fuel types. For example, gas cars, hybrid cars, and even a few electric cars. If I wanted to maintain different templates for my ads or my campaign structure based on that, I could put a condition in here. So I could say this template is only going to apply when the fuel type, which is a text, is equal to hybrid. And then save this. And so now what will happen is when this template is run, we're only going to apply the template when the field meets the condition where that car is listed as a hybrid. Now that we've told the template where the data is coming from and exactly what portions of that data we'll be using, it's time to move on to setting up campaigns. So we can use existing campaigns or we can also create brand new campaigns. So let's make new ones. Now say that we wanted to do a campaign for every combination of the brand of the car. And then we put a space and then I type in a squiggly bracket and then I want to include the model of the car. So you can just click on here, but if you click on the arrow, you'll notice we can also take some other fields. So we can take the value of that field, or if it's a numeric field, we can take the minimum, the maximum, or we can also take the count to see how many of those values exist. In this case, we're just gonna keep it simple and insert the uh, value of it. So basically what we're saying is we're gonna make one campaign for every combination of brand and model. Now with this campaign, we have a few attributes that we can set up, things like negative keywords list, campaign extensions, as well as the specific attributes of the campaign, things like what type of campaign is it, search, display, dynamic search ads, where's the budget coming from, what locations is it targeting, languages, campaign dates, bidding strategy, audiences, and final URL checks. So all of these you can take a look at. I'm not gonna go through them in detail, but the other thing you could do is you could say, we're actually going to pull all of the settings from a campaign that I've already made somewhere else. So now you can simply select from one of your existing campaigns and say which elements we're gonna bring in and then simplify it that way. Finally, make sure you enter a budget. It can be an individual or a shared budget. In this case, we're gonna put in an individual budget of $5 and then we can click to save our campaign. Now let's go set up some ads for these ad groups. So you can see we support text ads, responsive search ads, call only ads, as well as a default ad. The default ad is helpful because sometimes your dynamically generated text ads or other ads may exceed the character guidelines from Google and hence be disapproved. When you have a default ad that's not using as many dynamic insertions, it makes it more certain that you, you will have some ads to run that will not be disapproved by Google. Let me go ahead and fill out some of the fields here for a text ad. As you can see, I filled out many of the dynamic insertions already in headline, headline two, path one, and path two for the ad. Now let's do something a bit more interesting. So now remember that this ad group is going to be based on pulling in combination of items based on exterior color, as well as the model from the spreadsheet of data that you have. So what if we wanted to include how many of those you have in inventory? So let's say, we do exterior color, but now instead of inserting the value, 
we're going to look for the count that exists in this ad group. So now we're looking at how many of that specific color that's included here are available in this ad group. So we can say, uh, in this case, number to choose from, and then the insertion will automatically be changed into a number. So it might say five to choose from. Let's go ahead and save this. While I'm not going to set them up for the purpose of this demo, I do want to show you the extensions that are available. So both at the campaign and ad group level, you can set extensions for site link, call out and price. And all of these, of course, support dynamic insertion from the data source that you're pulling from. With keywords and ads for this ad group set up, we're ready to go ahead and save it. Now you do get a warning that says you don't have a default ad and we generally recommend you have it, but it is also fine if you want to skip it. Now we're ready to go ahead and save and preview because we have everything set up from the campaigns to the ad groups, keywords and ads. After a few seconds, your preview will be ready. And here we can see we have eight campaigns, eight ad groups, 24 keywords and three ads. You can click on each of these to get more detail about these various entities. So for example, we can see that eight new campaigns will be created based on a combination of the make and the model of the car. The ad groups, meanwhile, will be a combination of the color and the model of the car. The keywords, like you saw before, are based off of three templates with a variety of match types. We can scroll through the list and for each ad group, see which keywords would be generated. Finally, we can take a look at the ads. Now notice we have some ads that have errors and some ads that are fine. If there's an error, it says exactly what's wrong. In this case, when we insert path two, it makes the ad too long, so it'll be rejected by Google. That's why we recommend always having a default fallback ad for every ad group. You can also filter this to say, only show me my invalid ad texts or keywords. That helps you hone in on what's wrong and what needs to be fixed. You could go back to the template fix what's necessary, and then once you're happy, click Apply to Google Ads to either instantly apply these changes to your ads account or schedule it to be automatically run on a schedule so that your ads account is constantly kept in sync with what's in your inventory and your structured data. If you don't have access to Campaign Automator yet, you can email support at optimizer.com to get access, or you can come to our homepage under Capabilities Find Campaign Automator and then schedule a demo by requesting it from right here. Thanks for watching.